Speed out magazine, test one. Forty five can on a nine millimeter. Your left. There you go. Shooting a little left, and it locked back. Can't do a close up, just pull it out. All right, Pete Out Magazine. Hello, this is Uncle Jim. And the other day I ran into an anomaly, an enigma. And so I thought I would share this with you. And this pertains to uh, the Lyman Brassmith powder measure here, which I've had for years. I bought it when it first came out. They were $35, and I should have bought more of them at that price. Anyway, what was happening is, uh, well, let me show you. So for those that don't know about these, these are great. They'll throw any good throwing powder perfectly. And so what I really liked about it is it has an adjustable stem, so you don't need inserts. They're referenced, so you can do rifle and pistol. And they have a little O-ring here which I thought was wearing out. Focus. Uh, because I noticed something, and this is the first time it's happened. I've had this for many years. And it was because I was tapping hard on it. Um, so uh, this O-ring acts as a sealer, as well as keeping it from turning uh, on your powder charge. So let me put this back in for you, and we'll we'll screw this back on. So this goes up in here, where your powder charge comes out, and it seals it, and uh, you have your reference marks. And then uh, this part here gives you powder charge, because once you get it all the way up here, now for 10 millimeter, I'm going to be way up here. Let's put it about here. I'm going to turn it down. So what was happening is, uh, what you do is you got this little uh, brass screw and you want that on the flat of the stem, the charging stem. And let's, let's focus. Let me put it on the stand. And let's focus. Okay. Hopefully that's good. There we go. So normally everything was fine for many, many years. But one thing I noticed, let me get it up where I want. Well, let me show you. Okay, let's just stop here. Uh, with the powder I'm using, uh, each powder has a different personality uh, when you're throwing. And sometimes with this particular powder, I like to go one up. And then two down. And I was tapping it pretty hard in a perfect charge. And one thing I noticed is, this was to the side here. One thing I noticed was this slightly turned at the end of my tray when I was almost done. So I measured it and I was a tenth of a grain off. Are we still focused? So I thought, what the hell, is this inside uh, O-ring wearing out? No, it's perfectly fine. Now, I do put graphite on it. I put graphite on the O-ring, I put graphite on this, and I put graphite on this whenever I put it back together. And I could see this little button just slightly turn at the end, and I thought, well... I better measure that. That wasn't where it was. It was slightly over. And sure enough, it had turned on me because this is kind of slippery. It's got graphite on it and everything. And I thought, well, okay, uh, let's fix this real quickie fix. Keep it simple, stupid. 
And I thought maybe some blue Loctite with a little brush and just put just a line on the threads and let it dry, kind of like your scope ring uh, screws come and things like that. But then I didn't want any bits or shrapnel falling in my empty brass when I'm running a tray, you know. I don't want debris or debris. So I grabbed an O-ring right over here in the toolbox, one of the Harbor Freight sets, and slipped one on and rolled it on. One that's kind of tight, but not too tight. And voila, watch this. So once they get up here, I think my powder charge is going to be right in this area. See how the O-ring goes with it? and almost rolls with it. And now this has no chance of moving at all. Okay, and it's the first time it's happened in many, many years. So if you come across that problem, that is an easy fix. And when you go to clean it, if you're taking it apart, you can leave the O-ring right there because all you're doing is taking this off, this off, and this off to get this out. So uh, there you go. Super easy fix. Now, a few other things I noticed over the years. I wish this was steel because it's brass and it's threaded to steel. And sometimes you can't get that, you know, to stay tight on. You want it on the flat of the stem here to, so it turns together for your powder charge. You got reference lines here. You got reference lines here. Uh, one thing you can do is put... Um, some Teflon tape on the threads here, and then the back one here. The, the There's a back button here in case you want to take this off and leave the base on. Uh, that would help. The rear one is steel, but for some reason they got a brass one here. Probably so you don't mar uh, this flat here, okay? Because everything's smooth and precise and that's probably the reason so keep an eye on that for coming loose because if say this came loose and you're turning it well this thing's going to do whatever it wants you know so anyway my problem the other day was when i was being aggressive and giving it two hard taps i won't do it loud for the camera but i was bam bam up bam bam and that's how this powder likes it. Every powder sometimes has a personality of its own. Uh, so the easy fix was an O-ring here. And you can leave it on there. And it doesn't matter what setting you're on. If say, say you came way back here. You can roll it down to where you want. And then go in with your charge until you have the proper charge. So there you go. That ke that keeps it from moving at all, even though I got graphite on the threads. I didn't want the threads getting messed up. And, of course, you don't want oil. And so there's the little tip of the day. I don't know if it's a tip, but it sure makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside when I'm doing uh, full-up charges. And I get a tenth of a grain off all of a sudden when I want them the same. So uh, there you go. So you can Teflon the brass, put an O-ring here and you can leave it on and they're super cheap, big Harbor Freight kit. They had a whole bunch of this size in there. And boy, I feel better now. We can continue. All right. So anyway, over here, I was doing some uh, cranky molds. I've already shot, I had a full tray here. By the way, I'm using six-shooter Texans trays, the best. Look at that, you can hold them sideways, there's no wobble. You can put a funnel on them, you can use the thrower, just like we're doing now. And so uh, I'm trying a cranky uh, let me borrow a mold. What is this? This is the uh, Accurate 40-180B. They come out to 182 to 183 grain for 10 millimeter. And I only shot a few because I kind of screwed up. Uh, but in the Strybog, there's the group. We got this five-shot group, and I'll take that all day long.
Now I did make a little mistake here. Since this bullet is an ogive piggy, I left him long, a little longer in spec, you know, less jump. And my mistake was I plunk tested all the barrels, even the, my picky aftermarket barrel, which has a tight chamber and a short chamber. And I made them all plunk in that tight chamber. However, I forgot to check the magazines. I just grabbed the Glock magazines. I'm shooting a Glock, a 1911, and a Strybug. I checked the Glock magazines, and they fed in there and didn't bind up at that length. Okay, the length here is uh, 1.271. Now, more specky for this kind of bullet would be 1.265, and that's what I should have done. So, I forgot to check all the magazines. When I went to reload these in a 1911 mag, you get a couple in and then boom, sticky. Same with the Strybog. I had to really manipulate them uh, so they wouldn't have a jam problem. And luckily, I got some rounds out of that thing. So, next batch, I got to go down. These are all going to be for the Glock, which is perfect. So there's a little thing there, but yeah, I love these six shooter Texan trays. He sent me uh, several, I think I have three of them in this caliber, which is plenty. So there's the little tips of the day. Uh, another little fixing here are these PSA AK magazines in 556. Um, I'll cover that in another video, but uh, we were testing that the other day in the little Zastava. And uh, the mags are super nice. Here is the stock Zastava mag. Okay. Steel reinforced lips. Really nice. Steel reinforced, steel reinforced. So my son bought uh, three PSA mags. And they are still reinforced in here, so if your mag falls or whatever, hits the ground. And then a steel base. And steel reinforced. And this is all reinforced, and there's actually steel under this plastic here. So everything was good, right? Until, let me see if I can. Okay. Until we were shooting just a couple rounds to sight in at a time, like putting two in, testing the, we were testing a trigger. And what was happening is when this came up, it would go clunk and it was, it was, uh, it was kind of, it was catching on something. Now you can see it's super smooth. Now, I don't know if that's going to be in all, all their magazines or what, so... Uh, the simple fix on this was, I'll try and do a close-up here. He figured out that it turned out to be these two little nubs that ride down in the magazine. Keep it side to side. You can hardly see them. Yeah, right there. See these nubs? Well, it was square at the top. And that was the little ka -chunk at the end. So all he did was just beveled the two tops of these little buttons here on the side and everything was good. Then we tested it and the mags worked beautifully. So they're 30 rounders. Springs are good, everything's good on it. Uh, so we really do like these mags, nice and stout. They're smooth and I like the uh, metal reinforcement in case you drop them on the concrete or whatever and the steel base plate, and the steel reinforcements in here. So, uh, and here. So, everything is good. So, there, today is the day of fixing, and figuring, and ciphering. I got a nail in my Ford 250. A nail in the front tire, and it's been in there for six months, and it's holding air, and I've been driving to the garbage can and everything with it, but uh, it's time to fix that, too. So, I hope you found this interesting. Until next time, thanks for watching.